One unfortunate phenomenon, however, poisons the competition and spoils the fun. Cheating. Hello, hello. Do you ever have this weird suspicion that something wasn't quite right in a match of Dead by Daylight? Did someone seem slightly too fast? Or did that flashlight blind last maybe too long? Perhaps you bumped into a cheater. Today we're going to be discussing exactly that. Looking at types of cheating in video games, anti-cheating measures implemented into DBD, the types of people who are inclined to cheat, why it's a problem in the first place, and discussing what exactly can be done to combat it. So let's get started. Cheats are software components that implement game rule violations, such as seeing through walls or automatically targeting a moving character. We should probably try to separate and define the types of cheating in video games so it's clear what we're talking about. So let's separate cheats into three primary groups. Cheat codes, exploits, and hacks. Cheat codes are button sequences which alter the game's state, sometimes intentionally left in by developers for players to experiment with. Often found in single player games allowing players to spawn in weaponry or replenish health for example. In development, these cheat codes were likely utilised for testing purposes by those creating the game. Next up there are exploits. What I mean by this is when a user takes advantage of an element in the game which doesn't feel intended. For example, being able to damage an enemy from a location it cannot reach you from, or in Dead by Daylight, survivors hiding in an inaccessible location, basically taking advantage of an in-game bug, be it in the level design or something else. Finally there is hacking. In terms of video games, this is the development of a third-party software which can manipulate data between your game and the live servers. This might include adjusting variables to give you a speed boost or change your health state at the click of a button. To have a fully encompassing definition, however, we can turn to Yan and Choi, who describe cheating as any behaviour that a player may use to get an unfair advantage or achieve a target that is not supposed to be. Choi, a Dead by Daylight content creator, has interviewed hackers in the past link to their channel in the description. One interesting revelation in late 2021 was the claim that there is about 10% of the PC player base that hacks in some kind of way at the moment. Obviously this is difficult to verify, but a scary prospect. In other responses they outlined an increasing number of players utilising their hacking tool to provide various abilities, such as increased speeds and seeing through walls. What's particularly worrying is the use of subtle hacks in Dead by Daylight. Sometimes it is almost impossible to distinguish smart play, e.g. good use of tactics, from cheating. DBD's killers and survivors are balanced with specific speeds and tools at their disposal, and if you alter this even a little bit, you quickly develop an unfair advantage. Be it closing the gap on loops too swiftly, being able to find a hiding survivor as you can infinitely see their auras, or being able to finish healing instantly before the killer reaches you. All of these things can be difficult to track, but massively alter the balance of the game. And these are examples of subtle hacks. Some are far more blatant. So what is currently in place to prevent and reduce cheating in DBD? In online games, players connect to a central server which sends information back to everyone playing. Third party cheat software attempts to bypass the information sent to the server with misinformation, such as the prior examples of adjusting health states. To prevent this, Games companies can try to code forms of anti-cheat into their games. These often attempt to detect strange behaviours in variables or movements of the character. This is a difficult task as hackers are often continually adapting to counteract these measures. So increasingly, companies lean towards dedicated anti-cheat providers. In Dead by Daylight, Behaviour uses a third-party software called Easy Anti-Cheat. What's interesting is many of the games they provide for are shooters of some sort, such as Hunt Showdown, Apex Legends and Fortnite. Dead by Daylight stands out among them as a result, leading me to wonder if Easy Anti-Cheat is more designed for catching out auto-aims than it is sly variable changes, which is the most common hack seen in Dead by Daylight. It might explain why it's still pretty common to see hackers, whereas it's very rare to see in games like Fortnite, when they are utilising the same tool. Another anti-cheat tool used by Behaviour is the fear of punishment. Being caught out as a cheater can result in a permanent ban from the game, losing all of your progress and access to the game you've maybe spent quite a lot of money on. For this to happen, it's going to require them to be reported. For this, there is the in-game report system, but it's pretty well known that this system is mostly a fruitless effort at the moment. So to report a hacker, you have to submit a ticket on Behaviour's official website. This requires you to sign in with an account, 
gather the user's Steam ID, and give video evidence of the hacking. Basically, quite a lot of work on the part of the player, most of which aren't continuing recording their matches anyway. Combating hackers is challenging and requires a dedicated team constantly adapting and evolving code to work around the hacker's attempts. I suspect Dead by Daylight may not have the resources in place at the moment given the increasing number of hackers I've seen, and I don't believe easy anti-cheat is the be-all protection the game requires. But who is behind these hacks? Why would someone want to cheat in an online game in the first place? In a paper looking into cheating in online games, they describe three main purposes for people to cheat, these being monetary, competitive advantage, and advancement. Monetary refers to how virtual goods are worth real-world money on eBay and online game economies provide a lucrative opportunity for cyber criminals. Purchasing virtual goods is nothing new, microtransactions being a common practice in gaming nowadays. Where this differs is rather than supporting the developers, this supports private individuals who are actually hurting the game, but we'll get to that shortly. It has been recently estimated that cheat code developers generate between $15,000 and $50,000 per month from one class of cheats for a particular game alone. This further suggests the popularity and widespread issue that hacking in online gaming space is becoming, and also the profitability driving individuals to develop such cheats. Another reason people cheat is for a competitive advantage. They don't sell the product, they buy it. Cheating specifically to win, likely due to an unhealthy relationship with gaming, may be somewhat basing their own personal ego on their ability to win. It can be suggested this feeling leads to an inability to accept defeat, so better to cheat than to lose perhaps. We discussed categories of players in a past video, and cheaters likely come under the killer mentality. They don't care about others' enjoyment of the game, and only care about winning itself. Finally, there is advancement which relates to players seeking to skip through the grind that some games contain. For example, in Dead by Daylight, this might be unlocking all the perks for each character. So players may find a bot or a hack that makes gameplay easier or lets them acquire in-game resources in less time than the developers likely planned. Fortunately, DBD is reducing the grind in the upcoming mid-chapter update, so this should be less frequent. As a side note, some people cheat just to be annoying and ruin the game for others. I don't want to focus on these people too much because they're just kind of uninteresting to me, but it's worth noting that a small number of them do exist. Anyway, generally speaking, people don't like cheating. It is socially frowned upon. A study which examined the social aspects of cheaters found that cheaters lose friends over time compared to non-cheaters, an indication that there is a social penalty involved with cheating. But worryingly, they also found that cheating behaviour spreads through a social mechanism, the number of cheater friends of a fair player is correlated with the likelihood of her becoming a cheater in the future. So although socially speaking, people don't like cheaters, if you associate with them, it suggests that your own moral code regarding cheating will degrade. What is particularly noteworthy is in another study focusing on the causes of cheating in video games, they found that the tendency to cheat results from personality traits and situational factors. Individuals with a high level of this tendency cheat in games and in life. They also suggest Video games do not raise the tendency to cheat, and we can therefore play without having to worry that our moral standards will suffer. So it's not the games that cause people to cheat, it is just who they are. I still would suggest there are some elements of online anonymity affecting people's willingness to cheat, much like it does their sometimes toxic behaviour as discussed in a past video, but there is at least some evidence to suggest cheaters just cheat. But is cheating really that bad? As soon as the rules are transgressed, the whole play world collapses. The game is over. Players who cheat break a social contract within the game world. They are not playing the same game. We've discussed balance in multiple past videos, looking at fairness and comparing asymmetrical horror games, and a common sentiment in gaming is that fairness or equality is an essential component of games. Simply put, the game is spoiled when someone cheats. I would argue even spoiled for the cheater themselves, a person who cheats likely lacks confidence in their ability to get better at the game and win fairly. They rob themselves of the opportunity to improve. I would argue it would be more beneficial to their ego to actually play properly. It somewhat reminds me of someone playing a killer for the first time who face camps. They aren't really learning the killer. They may as well just stick with Bubba at that point. 
Dead by Daylight can be one of the most unique and exciting games to play, regardless of a win or loss, and those who don't engage with that gameplay do themselves a disservice. So that's a very cheater-focused issue. I believe cheating is unhealthy for those who cheat, and it spoils the fun for them and everyone else. But further to this, players can be discouraged by rampant cheating and stop playing the game altogether. Cheaters who can't handle playing a game on an equal footing hurt the game overall. Not only do they spoil an individual match, they can push other players to not want to play anymore. Less players means worse matchmaking. The domino effect can damage a game massively. So is there anything that can be done to turn this trend around? Unfortunately, there isn't much a player base can do, outside of ridicule and avoidance of those who do choose to cheat. The best that can be done is to report hackers and hope they are dealt with. Cheating in video games is profitable, so there will always be people seeking to take advantage of players who lack self-esteem in their ability to win at a video game, and unfortunately, there will always likely be players willing to spend money to ruin their own game. The best we can hope for is that behaviour turn to focus on forming a dedicated anti-cheat team, who can focus on counteracting these cheats that are far more specific to DBD than maybe the Easy Anti-Cheat is designed for. There is limited information on Easy Anti-Cheat out there, likely because the less we know, the more difficult it is for hackers to bypass. So in discussing this software, a lot of what I've said is pure speculation, and fending off cheaters and hacks is an expensive, difficult job. But Dead by Daylight is now the dominant asymmetrical horror game, and arguably one of the top horror games of all time. I think if it's going to continue in a healthy direction, the cheaters need to be addressed before things worsen, and only behaviour can do that. If you do happen to bump into a cheater, sit comfortably knowing, yes they're annoying, but they literally can't handle playing a party game without cheats. Which is sort of heartbreaking if you think about it. I hope you've enjoyed the video, I wish I was ending on a more cheery point, but if you have enjoyed, please consider subscribing, commenting, liking, and bing-bonging that notification bell. See you in the next one and have an awesome day.